we are starting another mobile home roof. Rubber. This one already has rubber on it. Somebody has a piece of drip edge. Another piece of drip edge. Turn bar. Cover tape. This is why I don't like doing this way. Because this comes loose, unsticks from the edge. So I roll mine over the edge and put it underneath the turn bar. So I don't have to do this and deal with that. Because that peels right up. And then it's soaking wet under there. Soaking wet. Hey, I think it might be insulation board on this thing. Maybe, I don't know, I can't tell. But it's soaking wet under there. But this is the reason why I go over the edge and try to, try, instead of trying to stick my rubber to that edge right there, because it just peels up, it doesn't stick. Over time, you just feel it back. Watch where you're walking up there. All right, so it's got rubber on the roof up here. Go ahead. Whew, boy, she's rough. Go ahead and get rid of that piece of rubber all the way around. Yeah. Look how rough it is. It's rough. Oh, it's got the boards down the middle, Paul. Cutting off the old rubber. This thing's got, it looks like it's got a rib right down the middle. I think that's what they, you know, the only reason why they put that in there is to give it a ridge. So it's not just completely flat. The only thing I can think. <clears throat> They're all a little bit different, so that's why I like making videos of all of them. People can see the difference. This has a runner here and a runner here. And then it stops right there in the kitchen. And it goes right down the middle with another runner and nothing over there. So. No. No. All stays. Just cut to the edge. Somebody put this metal right over the top of this metal roof. Which has been up here for a long time. You know, I mean, it, it works. And it doesn't seem to have caused any problems. That I can see. Cheap way to do it. That's a cheap way to do it. We did this one right here. Across the street. God, it's been every bit of 10 years ago. Paul, how long we do that roof across the street, remember? Okay, how long ago? 10 Better than 10 years, right? Yeah, it's been over 10 years ago. Yep, yeah, no overhang on that. We didn't do the 6 inch overhang back in the day. I don't know who did this one. We didn't do this. I would never do anything like what they did there. Nor would I just go over the top of it with rubber, personally. There's better ways. Hey, Billy, you could use that at your house. No? I got enough. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Where's your knife? Out with the old. All right, so I want to show you exactly what we do. Find the centers of every ceiling joist, or rafter, whatever you want to call it. They should run close to two feet on this one they do. Sometimes they're 16 inches. That tape measure will just give you an idea where it's at. You start poking. So you find one side and then find the other.
Paul over here moving this. This, this goes to the, eight, the air conditioner, heat, heat pump in the, in the closet. So it more than likely has a stack that goes down. You want to be careful of this. Take your time. Take that thing up. Because you don't want to run it. They're very expensive. You'll pay $50 for this part right here. Every trailer is different, people. We want to keep this curve going all the way down this roof. We got a flat spot on this end. We're gonna get rid of that flat spot. Turn it into a turn it into a crown right here in the middle. Got a large overhang in the front. So we extended our one by's out here, two by four out in the top, because we're gonna line this whole thing up right here. This this porch and that's gonna line up in one piece. All the way across instead of having a jog right there so a little bit bigger overhang than we usually do out here but that's all right <clears throat> we're just packing it down right now so see that that kept our roll all the way down through there which was perfect exactly what we wanted and then that will still continue once that two by four runs out right there stops because of that you can see the rest of the crown right there right down through there that thing will still crown all the way. So sometimes you have to do things a little bit different. You got to be creative. There's nothing wrong with being creative. All right. And for everybody out there, um, I had a PET scan on Monday. I mean, excuse me, Friday. Uh, I thought I was going to find out Monday whether I was completely clear. Um, but I do find out on Wednesday. So my doctor said, no, you're going to come in on Wednesday. We got an appointment. So Wednesday I find out whether all my cancer is gone. Thank you for all my supporters and YouTubers out there that have been keeping up with me and praying for me. All prayers appreciated. I actually sleep with a prayer cloth underneath my pillow. It's in my pillowcase every night. And I will until my doctor tells me on Wednesday that I'm clear of cancer. And check it out. That prayer cloth was given to me from um, a gentleman that I met that lives in Wilmington. Um, last name Baker, can't remember his first name, but he uh, he went to his church and his preacher passed out the prayer cloth to anybody who needed one. And I sold him one of my dump trucks. I sold him my dump truck, and the man came by to look at my dump truck. I told him what I had going on, and he said, "Well, I have something for you." And he gave me his prayer cloth and actually sat there with me, and he said a prayer to God for healing of my cancer. And I, I really appreciated that. It made me actually cry. Um, and have had several people pray with me since. I feel like it's gone. Find out on Wednesday. I have an appointment at 1.30. But anyways, that prayer cloth, um, as soon as I find out, I'm going to call back this guy. Uh, because I did save his telephone number. And I'm going to give him the prayer cloth back. With tons and tons of appreciation for letting me use it. But like I say... Uh, Every every night that that is in my pillowcase, I put a baggie, and I took that baggie and I put it in, put the prayer cloth in it, and I actually have two prayer cloths. Uh, a sister that we know from another church brought over a prayer cloth, and I took them prayer cloths and put them together, put them in a baggie, and slipped them inside my pillowcase, and I've been sleeping with them every night. And uh, that guy Baker asked me to uh, send him that prayer cloth back. When uh, the doctor told me I was clear to cancer. So I'm looking forward to Wednesday. Looking forward to Wednesday and uh, get back off of that subject. Um, back to roofing. Uh, thank you again, though, everybody, for all the prayers. I feel so much better now. I'm, I'm really coming along. I still have a feeding tube and I still can't eat anything, stuff like that. I can't taste anything, is really the basic reason why I can't eat. But other than that, I'm feeling pretty good. And again, thanks for watching and subscribing. And wishing me all the prayers. Every one of them was appreciated and needed, believe me. So this is another, like I say, mobile home that we've done. And it's a little bit different than the rest of them. A little bit different. But as you can see, we're going to keep that roll coming all the way down through here instead of having a flat spot in the middle right there. 
eliminate any flat spots. Raise it up. That looks good, Paul. Once we get it all screwed down, it's going to be beautiful. <coughs> so anyway, uh, like I said, that's going to be the end of it. That's the end of all our blocking that we have to put. Now the rest of it, the trailer is smooth enough and nice enough that we can go right down to the trailer itself like we usually do. But sometimes you have to use a little bit of um, you know, judgment where you're going to put things and how you're going to put it and make it all look good. So the reason why I have 50 uh, rubber roof videos and I keep doing them over and over again because every trailer is different and I want everybody to get the idea um, their trailer is going to be different than the one I'm doing but you be a little bit creative like this and you can make this thing really sweet again you can see where we popped all our lines on our roof because we want to screw into the rafter you don't want to screw into a piece of metal the screw won't hold definitely want to screw in. don't screw your screws down so tight that they go through the OSB we want them kind of flush with the top but everything down nice and tight Chris, Chris is always down here He's my ground guy, because he's the big guy, and you want small guys on the trailer like these guys here. They're all tiny. Chris is the big guy. Hey, big guy. Chris. Thank you, Chris. You're the man. Anyways, thank you, Paul. You're the man. Appreciate you. Everybody. Yep, you only want to cut it down a straight line. So anyway, um, appreciate all my guys. They really work hard helping me out on these things. Billy's only a part-time worker. He used to be a full-time, but he's got a bad back, and now he's a part-time. And he, and he also, uh, obviously, stays home a lot to take care of his daughter. So, I appreciate you coming in today, Billy. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming in, Billy. I appreciate you today. Anyway, here, back back to this. this is, these are our lines. This line here, the top line, was just for this, and we ran them all the way down just because... Uh, we wanted to keep it straight from one end to the other. Blah, blah, blah. Cross lines. Found them by the holes. Did the same thing on the other side. Pop lines across. Found them in the middle. See, there's a 2x4 right here. Actually, there's a double 2x4. So we had to get to either side of that to find the rafter. And we poked holes in that side and that side. Found the center market. That's the way to go. Get all the marks on your roof. All of them. Before you even start anything, the most important part is finding your rafters, marking your roof off. <clears throat> and obviously, the reason for that is, as you can see, you want to make sure that you're putting your roof on the... You know, you don't want it buckling up. You just don't want it to buckle up later. Um, so you can put your screws in the rafters and not in the metal itself because you're just screwed. Forget about it. You put a screw in the metal, that's not going to hold, and your plywood is going to be popping off your roof before you know it. And when that happens, you're going to have a bad day. Because you can't take your rubber up and start screwing again underneath. Put new screws in your plywood. So make sure, before any rubber goes on your roof, that you are screwed down tight. Yes, our OSB lines up all the way across there. This thing, this roof already has all the support it needs. These are only adding more support. And me lining up that OSB line right there is not going to make this roof weak. So, I mean, it's already, it's already strong as it needs to be. And adding this plywood adds a lot of extra strength. Notice we're putting that blocking in for where it's lifted up. We'll make sure we have screws in all the seams. So just block it out. If you got a gap, block it. It's going to run out to nothing. We'll have no gaps back here. It's going to drop right down there in the middle. Like Paul's got it. Alright, so now, from here, I believe, what are you going to do, Paul? You're going to uh, just start running down the... You want a few more? Bring it out to here. You're going to bring it right to here? Oh, yeah, and that'll be the end. Then we'll change it out. Okay, that's a good idea. How's that going to work? We just talked about it and uh, came up with, since this has a middle 2x4 that runs down here, and that means it drops down an inch and a half, so uh, 
our forefoot runs right here on the other side of that two before just a couple inches so that means that I can't really actually hit that rafter without without pulling my plywood down right here at this outside edge so I'd have to run another one by just like that all the way down the side of this to catch that other lap and uh, then I'd be have a raised up down through here so I don't think I want to do that I think what we're going to do is go ahead and continue this exact thing we've got going on and we're going to do that from one end to the other because everything works out to, on two foot on centers which is really really nice yeah yeah you're gonna hit that middle you might have just went a little deep on that one that's all right we'll, 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 we'll match them up once the other board goes on anyways <clears throat> by the numbers by the numbers and not having to run another one by up here i think we're just going to go with what we've got all the way now one end to the other seems to be working out okay once we get this all screwed down see the edge is not screwed down um, we're going to have a transition from this course to that one and we showed you how to do that on the last video or the one before it if you want to check that out yeah the, the one before not kitty hawk but the one after that or before that you can see the transition of what we do, and we're going to do the same thing on this one. This one here has got a porch over here, and it has rolled roofing on it. It has rotten wood, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. Fix the rotten wood, cut off the overhang that's on this sinking thing. I don't know why they left the plywood hanging past the outside too by. We're going to cut it all back flush. Found a rotten wood? Yep, found some rotten wood. Um, cut it off flush with a two by so that we can roll our rubber over the edge and put a termination bar around that. We'll probably end up wrapping that thing with metal, make it look look good. Don't you agree, Paul? Yeah. Yes. Wrap it with metal. 100%. Looks so much better. Put a little wrap on that. It won't take nothing. Well, these things are rickety before you put something on them. And I always suggest not to walk on these daggum rickety ass thing. Because if you uh, have a, a mobile home, and this seam right here where they put these two pieces of metal together, if that seam is rusted and you step right there, the seam will break right in two and then you can never fix your roof. With, I mean, you're never going to fix it with cool seal. Then you're going to be in an emergency situation. So watch how you walk on these roofs. Um, I always tell my guys, even though we've done this for years, make sure you're putting your foot in the right spot. And we pretty much know you can tell it. If you look down through there, I could tell where they are before I even pop lines on it but you yourself might not be able to tell and you break a seam you're going to be in an emergency situation where you can't fix your roof uh, before the next rainstorm I promise you unless you have me living close by and you decide to go with this rubber like we do look at that big dip right there so yeah, whew. that's from people walking on this thing that's the only thing that's from is people coming up here and there's a one rafter right here, and then they, they think they can step right here, and that's what everybody does. They step right there, and there's not a rafter there. It's here, and then the very outside one by that runs across there. It's not a lot on these ends, so especially don't walk on these ends. And uh, the best place to walk would be right down here in this bottom wall, because there's a wall under me. And I can almost walk anywhere at the very bottom. Now, once I get to the plywood walk anywhere you want to once it's all screwed down it's not coming up put that pretty overhang on it that we do yes sir look at this another layer of rolled roofing look at that instead of taking it up and doing it the right way no telling where there could be holes now look up underneath that roof and see if it's rotten anywhere See what you see. Tear it all up. We have to. All right, two layers of roll ripping, and you know they when they were put building this thing. See this piece of metal they put in here. And then they just ran that rubber. But earlier, before the rubber, they had this here. I'm sure, and and they just kind of tucked a piece of metal up underneath that little drip edge. This is the drip edge of the existing mobile home. Tucked it up under there, cocked the crap out of it, sealed it. A lot of cocking, but you can't stop that from leaking, ever. <coughs> That's why they probably went with the rubber roof. They had, to, had bad leaks everywhere. Porch and everything. Yeah, bad. 
I take you a month to take the fucking nails out with a flat bar. What is there, another layer under that? Yeah. Another layer. Paul's three layers. Three layers. Three layers of row roofing on that thing. One, two, three. And then 30 pound felt. Three layers. Throw it all in one pile. There it all. Fix it. Make it right. See, that would have been a pain in the butt to do later with that piece of metal underneath there. That would have been a nightmare. We got rid of all the humps and the bumps. This place looks uniform from one end to the other. Got rid of the flat spot here. Nice roll to it. Nice. I like that a lot. It's all right. It's all good. Bro, you know that's where the wires are. There's one thing, the squirrels really like that 2 by 4 They are chewing the heck out of it. Oh, we done? Yeah, just getting up there, sitting on that rail and chewing it. I think the best thing they could do would probably be to close that ceiling in on that porch. Do that one tomorrow. Getting ready to put on our two by fours on the outside faces. Go ahead. What? Good. Overview, just an overview of everything. I mean, this to me is. is uh, awesome. I love the way they come out. Putting rubber on this thing is just absolutely easy. I have seen people put rubber on these things and not glue it down, which is not very good. Eventually, it's going to move enough to where it cracks and breaks and blows off. But I've been across them before. Well, today, this one here wasn't glued down at all. It was just up here. And it stayed on here for years, so whatever. Not the way I would do it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mm -hmm. Bigger than 120 bucks, you know. $120 on 30 sheets. That's it. You're right. You're right. Was, go ahead and get the other piece, Bill. Thank you, sir. Nice. The transition right here, we'll fix all that up nice. Make it look real cool. Pop that red line so you know where the outside of the trailer is so you can screw into that. Most of the time, to be honest, it's a little three-quarter inch board. <coughs> so we screw into that and make sure we get into it. That's why we pop the line. Measure everything so it hits right on the rafters. There you go, Bill. Got you, brother. Got match over there. Put some screws in. Finishing off all the screws from after we get it laid. Rubber is on the roof. Most of it. Well, I'm trying to get it with this big, Matt's got it on that, this double rib right here on the outside, so I was going to try to get it. Line it up. This is just on for the night. Don't forget there's a big hole in there. Covering it up. So, day one, get your plywood on. If you don't get your sub faces on the two before then don't worry about it. You can clamp the rubber to the plywood like we're going to do. Uh, like we, with them clamps like we have there. Um, but we get the two by fours on we go ahead and clamp it right to the two by. Come back tomorrow, glue the rubber down, put the facial metal all the way around. Termination bar and it's done. So these aren't that hard to do. These aren't that hard to do. Come on. It's alright, guys. It's not that hard to spread out a piece of rubber. It's not that bad. Most of the time. Should have put your two before across the back. <coughs> huh? Yeah. 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 Got you. It's gonna look good. <coughs> We're gonna run metal all around there, make it look decent. All the way around. That looks so much better. <coughs> run metal on that. Built it down some. <coughs> there 
to change the plywood in the bottom. There and over there. Done the whole damn thing. Really, last piece right now. All the sub faces on, right? Next thing we're getting ready to do is go into the metal. Did that one at least 10 years ago, maybe more. The people that bought this are friends with them, actually, and they were staying across the street in that house, right there, when uh, when they called me and said, I've been watching your videos, and you did a video for my neighbor, and uh, we want the overhang on ours. So I knew when they told me where they were, what trailer they were talking about, and that was Mr. Ford. It had to be over 10 years ago. Hell. I don't even remember if I was, anyway, been a while ago. I think over 10 years, personally. I might go over there and jump up on it and do a little preview of an old one that we used to do and the way we did it. All glued down. All glued down with new plywood. Three-eighths was rotted. Check this out. See, this rubber went right up and over. This rubber is overlapping it. We're going to run our turn bar right here. And we'll cut that little bit off. It's on the bottom. That's a transition. That will never, never leak. Yeah, it's nice and tight. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. I like it. Anyway, turn bar will finish it out. And over here, as you can see, we've already... Got our two by fours on. I'm getting ready to wrap them on metal, and we're getting ready to show you that part now. Beautiful. One seam, 60 feet. This is the front porch, a little bit bigger. Made a replacement plywood down here, as you've seen earlier. Down here, everything else looked pretty good. We took off a layer of what they call torch down, 90 pound torch down. Um, but the way they did the bottom edge, as you've seen in the video, crappy. So again, same thing over here. Come up the porch. Straight to the 2 before that we installed. See that 2 before? We went brought that 2 before all the way down, the whole thing. 20 feet, whatever it is. <coughs> right down to this roof, which made a nice wall. Mm -hmm. Made a nice wall. And then... We run our rubber up and over, and we just cut whatever the excess is off here because, and we make sure we stick this to the wall because this piece here is coming over the top. Again, termination bar to finish it out all the way across. The transition on your house is tight, tight, and you'll never leak. Never. I mean, it's, it's impossible. This is all glued down 100%. Okay, so when you see them gluing that down, that's what they do. They glue this down 100%. Matt just showed up. Yay. Okay, so all glued down. Bathroom vent over here. Seam right here. Nice seam. You can see the glue all the way to there. With a leaf. Nice seam tape here. Six inch, like I like. Cleaner. First. This is not splicing adhesive. This is primer. With the seam tape, um, all you need is to prime the rubber before you put the seam on. 
There's no rubber to rubber glue type thing or anything like that has to be done. Oh. For the bathroom vent, of course we have a couple small, smaller vents that vent the sinks. And that's the washing machine uh, vent. Probably another one at the other end for the kitchen. Unless they put them underneath the sink, which I like. What they call ventless. My favorite. Alright, get ready to do the seam. Let me show you step by step how we do a seam. Alright, so you take your rag, like Ball has. <coughs> I don't know why they put their line on first. So just, all they really need to do instead of that line is um, to clean it all and pump a line later. I'd clean an inch past that line. Can't no, hurt. That's an inch past. That's an inch. That's one more inch past. Okay, that's good. And what you're doing is taking off this talcum, little white powder type, and that just uh, keeps it from sticking together, you know, while it's rolled up in a big roll. Clean it, clean it. Both pieces, the piece he's cleaning now, and the piece that's going to fold onto it. Hey, need to put a clip, cl put a clamp on it, buddy. No problem. It happens. It's windy. Cleaner, cleaner, both sides. Hit that subscribe button. If these are the kind of videos you like to see, mobile home repair, we do a lot of it. A lot. Next week I have four roofing jobs to do, so shingles. So I think I'm just going to do some shingle videos. And finish up this floor, right, Paul? The homeowner wants to get in there and do a uh, plumbing change. He's changing all the plumbing pipes. He doesn't like this old stuff. He's going with the new. Yeah, and instead of coming through the belly and cutting the belly out, opening and making a mess there, since we're tearing out the floors, he's going to go ahead and go from the top. So we'll leave it to him for a couple of days. Clean it, clean it. You're not going to get it all off. You never will unless you clean it. Take your primer. Do the same thing. Primer, primer. We made lines on this thing so we know how far that goes. And then we know to put our um, tape on the next line so that it hangs out a little bit. You don't want your tape to be underneath the lap. Tape always has to stick out a little bit. <clears throat> and then what you're going to wait for is for you to be able to touch that without doing that. And I'll show you in a minute what happens. It will get, it will get, as you see, you don't want it to be tacky. So, you can let this stuff sit until it's not tacky. And you can just actually let it sit for an hour if you want to, literally. As long as it doesn't get wet. And then put your, but you want it to be where it's not sticking to your fingers. Don't want it sticking to your fingers like that. Wait till it dries. Yeah, it won't be good. You gotta let it dry. So patience this is your next step here. Patience. <sighs> Stop the leaves. Go ahead. Now it's wait.
So you use the outside of the tape to put on the red line is what I hope you're doing. Okay. That's why it's clear so you can see where you, where you put your lines at. And you put that right on dead on the edge. see how Paul's touching it there and it's not sticking to his hand that's what you want you notice the tape has a layer of plastic on it <coughs> Paul's just gonna roll this thing over huh? and Billy roll it right over straight keeps any wrinkles out of it and then then watch this this is a, this is the important part getting started with this thing. Nice, get that all nice and flat. That piece of plastic you're going to get rid of. And as you get rid of it, Keep it, keep it down so you're not lifting up on your rubber so your other guy can keep it smoothed out. And we just go straight. Billy, you can come back here and start on this end rolling straight out with your roller. Just like you just did on the other one. And that's how I do a lap. That's how we do it. Yeah. And then at the end, um, we'll come back with our lap sealant and cock it. Cock that whole lap right there. pressure on that. Good pressure, Billy. Getting nice and tight. Alright. Metal, which Chris is making. I'll get a little short videos of that. Termination bar, which we've got laid up here. Turn bar screws come 250 to a bag, and we got a bunch of bags of it. We're getting ready to wrap this thing up with metal. Put turn bar on it, be done. Go back to the inside part tomorrow. Right, Billy? All right, so here we go. <coughs> Bending our metal like we do. <coughs> Excuse me. After the 2x4s are all installed. Metal break, break some metal. It's only two bends. Got little ports we wanted to cover it up, make it look nice. We close it off. It's gonna look really nice. Yep, going around with metal. Looks good, guys. Looks really good. What a difference, man. This is just difference is night and day from before old mobile home to the hangout overhang with the metal just really makes it look clean yeah makes it look so clean let's go around here and see if we can't watch Chris for a minute hearing something it sounds like it's inside on what's that noise I'm hearing it's a starter piece. You just bend it around. It's like that. Just bend it around. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. it goes on the outside. You're a little far away. No. 
don't know why it stayed so far out. Pull it up tight, overlap down there. Put your little nail in it. You can see it. Was it? Huh? Got a ticket. Turn bar screw. Basha, boxing, what gets screwed to the house? What, what size are you making the fascia? Uh, four and a half. Four and a half inches. Right on the mark. On the mark. Bend it into a 90. One piece of patient. Found the cutters? Yeah. All you have to do is take that one screw out back there. Might be in the right spot for this. Yep. Real close. Close enough. Bar. Screw it off. Cut the rubber, it hangs off down the bottom off. Got Chris over there bending metal for the ends. Rocking and rolling. Oh, this looks so much better. That's a finish. Wow. You got to make yourself on that? A little yearly flip phone.